Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn. How are you doing today? I am going to make these two cards using Yana's latest Anemone Blooms collection. So without further ado, let's make these. Okay, so I have already glimmered um, one of the glimmer plates that is part of this collection and really, really fabulous uh, floral spray here. And I glimmered and then I uh, went ahead and used a solid plate to glimmer the negative as well because I figure you may as well. I don't know if I'll use it, but um, it's while the glimmer machine is hot, it doesn't hurt because you know, it's just an extra panel that you can use. And that, any any design like this, it's really hard to have, you know, usable foil, uh, like solid bits of foil that you can use for sentiments or and whatnot. So I always figure I may as well just glimmer the negative and have it just in case. A while ago, um, I don't know if, if anyone will have um, remembered or seen it, but I did do a haul video where I picked up the Spellbinders uh, specialty paper that is designed specifically to glimmer onto. And I will be honest, I, I had my... I had a healthy dose of skepticism in terms of, can this really glimmer better than the paper that I'm currently using, which is my Hammer Mill 100 pound super smooth. And I am uh, happy <laughs> to to announce or reveal or um, be wrong on this because it really does work really well and it doesn't it's not just that it works really well but some of the glimmer plates specifically part of this collection have proven that the glimmer paper by spellbinders is actually better than the paper that i normally use in my particular setup now i will say that i had a little bit of a hard time cutting through the paper but I want to caveat that as well to say that I've been using the scrapbook.com magic mat. And so it's a very different plate combination and is actually a little bit thinner. And in fact, through my platinum machine, I, I don't really use anything <laughs> as a rule that is standard with the platinum. And so, I used the magic mat and I think I used the small cutting plate from my, uh, my, uh, cutter bug, cuddle bug. So it's, it's a very atypical plate combination that tends to be a little bit thinner of a sandwich than your typical. And that's why I, that's the only reason why I had a hard time cutting through it. Normally through, uh, regular dies cut just fine with that atypical, um, sandwich that I use. But I did have to use a proper sandwich to, to cut through the glimmer paper. But this, this particular glimmer plate, you know, not a problem on my regular paper. Um, but it's the thin sentiments that, um, I don't actually use on this particular card or these two particular cards, but it actually proved to, to make a huge difference, um, with those. Now, this, uh, both cards are well underway here now, and, um, I did pull out this 3D embossing folder. I love it. It's one of my favorites. And it's just that really lovely kind of, um, pincushion sort of look. And the 3D emboss on it is just so, it's just so lovely. And you get all of that, um, that lovely effect of it, of it really feeling very puffy very much like a cushion and what I did with the with the glimmered um, uh, floral design is I did slice through it uh, both the the positive and the negative I don't know that that made a huge 
huge impact design wise because of maybe where I sliced it and and also a little bit because of the design of the glimmer anyways the the foil design because part of the foil design has some negative areas that are foiled and mixed with some positive areas that are foiled so I don't know that that what I did necessarily changes the design in uh, a way that's super interesting. Um, like I said, in particular where I made that cut. So, cause, so you really could have just left it, <laughs> left it the way it was designed and, and not cut it. And I, and I think this card would, would still look pretty similar. But that being said, I do often like, uh, mixing and matching the positive and the negative and um and and slicing them and then putting mixing them up and putting it back together and so that's just something that that is hard to do because when you get a good glimmer for me I'm always very hesitant to cut through that but one I'm finding that I'm getting more and more consistent results so I'm not as afraid to just glimmer up another piece if if it turns out I slice through something and it doesn't look good. Um, that wasn't always the case. Sometimes it it took you know two or three attempts to really get something something um, that wasn't overfoiled or underfoiled to where I felt like I couldn't use it. And so that just takes time to figure out what the, you know, what the right papers are, what the right sandwich is. Do you need an extra maybe paper or cardstock shim, all of that good stuff. But once you've figured that out, and for sure, I feel like the special glimmer paper by Spellbinders kind of helps quite a bit. And I was skeptical because it's actually a lighter weight cardstock than the 100 pound cover weight that I normally use. That that made me a little bit skeptical as well because I feel like the, the paperweight does play a role because when I glimmer onto 65 pound cardstock, it's um I don't I don't generally get very good results. Um but like I said, I'm happy to be wrong and um and it's if you're struggling with foiling and, and getting a really good glimmer. I would I would recommend trying it at the very least, trying out the Spellbinders Glimmer paper. And I'll leave a link to it. I'll probably actually I gotta say, I think I'm gonna add this to my standard list of um supplies because I I may just actually switch to using the glimmer paper exclusively um because I get such good results with it. It's a little bit more expensive. So there is that as a consideration, but is it more expensive if you're having to like glimmer multiple times and cause you're, you're going through foil. Um, and, and that's a bit of a waste if you're not getting a really good glimmer or a really good foiling. So you kind of have to, it's not just the cost of the paper. Sure. You could glimmer onto less expensive paper, but then there's the cost of the foil too. So if you can get it in one shot, maybe the more expensive paper is worth it. Um, and really time and frustration <laughs> as well. There's something to say about that too. Now on my second card, I, I was, I wanted to foil, I mean, I wanted to, um, dry emboss vellum. I was, I've never dry embossed vellum through a 3D folder and I was a little bit hesitant to do that. So I picked a different 3D folder um to to foil through and I I love this plaid one as well it's another one of my favorites and so um so that's what I've chosen for my second card just to add a little bit of subtle texture to the background of that because um these cards don't have a lot I wanted the glimmer design to really um stand out but I don't want it to be so blank and empty in the background and that's where I think embossing folders are fantastic because they do give you that extra texture without adding busyness um, through an extra color. 
So I hope that you enjoyed uh, these cards and I'm loving this collection. So I'll be crafting with it more and all of the videos where I showcase Spellbinders products can be found in my Spellbinders playlist, which I will link here. Thanks so much for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.